Hello, I'm King Lincoln. Welcome to my review of Rive. That is Rive, R-I-V-E. This game is developed and published by two tribes. Now, Rive is an interesting platformer that was released in 2016. Honestly, I don't think it got a lot of attention. I know I didn't hear much about it, but the company behind it is actually probably best known for Toki Tori and Toki Tori 2. Though Rive is a completely different type of game, tackling a new genre, the platformer. The fact is, if it wasn't for Toki Tori, I might not have checked this game out, but the thing is, I wanted to see what the company who made those two games has done since. But I actually found out after playing the game, the development arm of uh, Two Tribes shut down, reopened for Rive, and then has shut down uh, since then. The publishing arm is still there, though. Now, a quick reminder, if you enjoy this video, definitely consider subscribing. Feel free to share this video with others. It helps grow the channel, and I'd appreciate that. Now, Rive's graphics are actually quite good, as you've already seen on the screen. They mostly are reminiscent of, like, side-scrollers, platformers, twin-stick shooters, and technically a little bit of Metroidvania. Though, for the last one, it's only a look, not really a feel of the game. There is a little variety in the art style as you move through the game, and while there are quite a few enemy types over the course of the game, it's one of the parts that I struggle with Rive with. It's not that there aren't changes to the enemies that appear, but rather there's an inconsistent pace. And when there are changes, they come slowly. You know, I don't know the exact timing of every time a new enemy is introduced, but it feels like Rive really introduces a new enemy maybe once an hour of game time or so. The world, however, is interesting and unique, and there seems to be a lot of locations. If you watch my footage, you're probably going to notice me returning to a few locations, such as finding the warp panel here, and then later I'm going to come back to it here. This is where I was talking about like that Metroidvania nature of the game, but it's not really. Instead, Rive is actually a level-based game that heavily reuses the same locations. Often the players will explore a location and then return a couple hours later. There's usually a reason to return, of course, but it isn't as special as returning to explore a part of the castle in a Metroidvania. There's only one path that you're allowed to take per level, so you're always on tracks even if it's your second or third time in an area. Personally, I would have loved for this to be almost a true Metroidvania, even if there wasn't much exploration, because then my character would be making these discoveries rather than the predetermined path for the game story. I even think this might have been a Metroidvania way back in the day, and they changed it over the course of development. The story of Rive is that you're a scavenger who's running out of fuel and ends up finding a giant spaceship. From here, the story kicks off where you're greeted by, well, this character. A slightly annoying drone AI, which does sound like a cliche, but honestly, it's not something we've seen too many times before. Well, outside of the drone just being a slightly weak character, which is kind of common. Our host doesn't have a strong personality. He becomes the only companion you have on the ship, and it's the boast that the game, the ship, and the developers are going to talk to you through. Mostly to complain about your current actions, though. However, the character does have some interesting dialogue that does develop over time, though similar to the enemies, it comes a bit later than it should. Or on the other hand, you can just blow him up. Admittedly, I did this first and had a blast killing him. The game even makes a few references to this, and there's even an achievement for avoiding this, but honestly, it's fun and a great way to speed up the dialogue. Outside of that, the core game is just about the main character who... Honestly, I don't remember if he has a real name. It's not used much, even if he does have one. He's trying to find fuel and something valuable that he can eventually sell, though before long, he mostly would just be happy to leave the ship. And that's it. The story is a bit weak, mostly moving the character from one topic to another as another escape plan comes up. But this doesn't work out as well as it could. In addition, there's some like game references, like this reference to Tetris, which I get them reaching out to us, you know, fellow gamers, but it doesn't really add too much to the formula here. Rive's gameplay is similar to the story and graphics. It starts with a simple side-scrolling shooter level, and the player is kind of like blasting asteroids, and adds to the formula as you go on in the game. As mentioned before, it is purely a level-based game. Well, it feels and looks like a Metroidvania, it really sticks closer to that 2D platformer with uh, twin-stick shooter elements. There's a couple of changes of pace, though. There's like another side-scrolling section that's rather good, uh, a few zero-g segments that are kind of nice, but I wish these happened a little more often, as the normal exploration segments take up a majority of the time and where Rive is at its weakest. 
One big twist to the formula, though, was the addition of hacking. Players are able to hit a left bumper and then use that right stick to aim a hacking ray that can hack remote panels and eventually enemies as you go on in the game. This can actually activate a number of features, but mostly it's going to be used to get the player, you know, a little extra firepower in the form of a friendly turret or a nurse bot that might heal the player as he takes damage. Now, unfortunately, this is done usually outside of battle, at least not in the center or the heat of it. Players will often be offered an opportunity to just hack something in a little bit of downtime. Since players will have to switch from gunfire to hacking, the feature is less useful in the middle of the battle, though there are a couple points where the players might have to juggle the two systems. It's not what the game seems to want to be doing. Rive also has unique controls. Okay, that sounds like a backhanded compliment, and you'd be right. Grab a controller if you can. Now, the left stick is going to move you, the right stick shoots. Okay, that's normal, and so far so good. The face buttons actually change a special weapon. Now, as I mentioned, the right stick is just shooting normal gunfire. The right trigger fires your special weapon in the direction that your gun is facing. And again, you're probably going to say this is normal. I agree, but this is where it gets odd. The left bumper actually changes your mode to hacking, like we mentioned, but the left trigger is the real problem. This is where your jump button is. Now, it sounds like this could work, though it probably will feel odd at first when you're holding a controller this way. However, it's when you start having to use the left trigger to double jump that the game really feels strange. You have to pull the trigger twice in rapid succession for a number of jumps, and some of the jumps require you know, a very specific amount of precision. Some of them you need to hit the jump at the top of the first jump, and it's just challenging to use a trigger for that. You know, if it wasn't for the jump button, maybe the game would feel a little more natural, but the left trigger jump never feels as natural as the game would probably require and will continue to be an oddity the longer you play. Rive also has two difficulties, normal and hard. I actually played through the game on the hard mode for a little extra challenge. There's actually not a bonus to the hard difficulty, but there's an additional star on the leaderboard at the end of levels to tell people you beat the level on the hardest mode, and I believe it doubles your score. Now, the harder difficulty makes the game a bit more frustrating. I spent over an hour on one boss, close to 30 minutes on another section of the game, and it just started to wear me down. The repeated deaths didn't really endear me to the game, and it seemed like they were a couple of cheap shots in there. But after finishing the game, I actually went back and I tried it on normal difficulty. I actually found myself having a lot more fun. The harder difficulty isn't significantly harder, but it pushes the game from, you know, an enjoyable run to a frustrating experience that can annoy the player. This isn't meant to be like a Dark Souls where you have to just get good. It just lowers the player's health a little bit, adds health to the enemies. Not an awful change necessarily, but... One that I think harmed the experience, I think the normal mode was probably the better way to play the game. And an hour might not sound that long to work on one section of the game, but most levels in the game are like 15 to 30 minutes long. The game itself took me close to 6 hours to beat, so spending an entire hour in one location is a significant amount of time. And this mega smash boss took quite a while as well. That's also one of about 4 bosses in this game as well. He's actually quite fun to beat on normal. On hard, this fight was just freaking annoying. The other three bosses range from like an excellent final boss to a run-of-the-mill first boss. They aren't special, but they do at least punctuate the game. Now, once you're done with the game, you might want to try out some challenges. And this mode does give you something new to do after you finish the game. There's just one problem. Challenges unlock daily. And no, this game came out years ago. It's unlocked daily by your time. Once you beat a current challenge, you actually have to wait until midnight to unlock the next challenge. And if you haven't beat the current challenge, it won't start counting down. Like, what the hell, two tribes? You also locked off the arena unless people friended your Steam group. I mean, this is all just an odd system, but I just don't think it works well. As mentioned though, the game is short, though while I don't normally replay games too often, I have almost beat the game a second time, and actually am probably going to play it a third time. The game allows you to replay any mission and throws out a speedrun mode as well and a one life mode if players really want to challenge themselves. The thing is, just replaying the game is kind of enjoyable because there's a ton of good and interesting moments all throughout the campaign. Rive's an interesting game. You know, after finishing the game, I honestly 
didn't know what score I was going to give it. But something called me and made me want to come back and try it again. Now that I'm almost finished the second time through, I think I get it. Rive's not the best game or something really outstanding, but rather it's a good, solid game that you can replay a few times and enjoy it for what it is. The controls are good, though that jump maneuver really hurts this game. The gameplay is absolutely fun, and while the story isn't amazing, it's a good, understandable story that actually has a great payoff for the ending. The thing is, by the end of the second playthrough, I realized I had seen everything previously and didn't mind replaying it and redoing things I had done only a handful of hours previously, because each section of the game is actually interesting. That's something most games can't claim, and it's what makes Rive stand out. But there's still enough small things that held me back, which kept this from being a great game. I give Rive a 3.5 out of 5. You know, the thing is, Rive is a fun little game, especially if you can grab it on sale. And it's actually a shame, because as I read up on Two Tribes for the review, I realized that they went bankrupt after Toki Tori 2, a game I really enjoyed, and it sounds like they stopped personally developing games a second time after Rive. You know, I get it. Rive isn't the most amazing game, it didn't sell very well, and perhaps that's probably the problem. But Rive, Toki Tori 1, and 2 are likable games that just never found the right audience. It's a bit of a shame because I think all three games are quite enjoyable, and that's actually something I feel like many games in the industry lack. That's my thoughts on Rive, and I honestly, well, I don't know what reviews to show you here. How about Celeste, an absolutely amazing level-based game from last year that really showed how to do like platforming and difficulty right? Or on the other hand, how about a Metroidvania that this game had me hungry for? What about Time Spinner? Until next time, I'm King Link, and thank you for watching.